Hello everyone, my name is Anna K. Rule and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well, I hope the week is going well. And as we continue the conversation regarding mental health awareness um, for Mental Health Awareness Month, I want to talk a little bit about a mental health screening tool that is used by um, healthcare providers. But I wanted you as a, probably the patients or even healthcare providers just to become more familiar with this tool and to understand the reason behind the tool and what the concepts mean. So we're going to talk about mental health screening tool. Okay, so the National Institute of Health explains that mental health refers to a person's overall emotional, psychological, and social well-being. Mental health affects how people think, feel, and act, and good mental health helps people to make healthy choices, reach personal goals, develop healthy relationships, and cope with stress. Now, the screen instrument used to screen patients for depression in primary care settings is a health is a patient health questionnaire, which is also called the PHQ-9. And I want you to understand when I say primary care settings, I'm more talking about like all patients and um, situations where you are going to be seeing a provider um, during that interaction or that day that you stop by the facility. The PHQ-9 questionnaire is a self-administered version of the prime ND diagnostic instrument for common mental disorders. The PHQ-9 is a depression module which scores each of the nine DMS-5 criteria. So if there's a score of zero, zero mean that not at all you experience what I'm going to say to you, the symptoms I'm going to talk to you about, or if your answer is three, it means nearly every day. Okay. So I hope this image is clear enough. Now this is, and I'm also going to put in the bottom of the comments, a link that will take you to a website where the PHQ-9 questionnaire, um, you can have a full view of it and you can get a better understanding of the questions on it. So for the PHQ-9 questionnaire, so let's get the pen, the laser pointer. So number one. So the questions, I know it's available in English, Spanish, French, Creole, I'm not sure what our language in the Portuguese, um, but it also depends on, one depends on which country you're in. It also depends on, you know, the states you're in, you know, the demographics of the area that you're in. But we're just gonna look at the English version for now. So these are questions that, it's a screening tool, so meaning that when you go to the facility and you check in, like, you know, I'm here to see a doctor or a nurse practitioner, I'm here to see a healthcare provider, You'll be given one of these papers and the questions are for you to answer and they'll be entered or should be entered similarly to your vital signs. Meaning that similarly to your temperature, pulse, your respiration, your blood pressure, these questions are going to be added as a part of the screening tool. Now the response to these questions is what's going to determine if the provider needs to have a further discussion with you and say it's a screening tool. So it's not like it's going to be used to say, hey, Based on your answers on this, you have depression, or we're going to start um, treatment right away. It's just used to the provider to know that, you know, this is someone who I need to pay more attention to. I need to follow up on these questions or concerns this person may be having. Could be a communication issue. Maybe you didn't quite understand what the question was asking. So it's just for you to understand better that when a provider asks these questions, it's just used to determine how much care is needed or if there's anything that they're just going to talk to you further about. So one thing I want you to pay attention to is that the tool says over the last two weeks, now I've had patients who they're going through something and maybe it's um, for chronic pain or something, but the question is, and I mean, if it's happening for more than two weeks, of course you're going to evaluate this, but it's not like this morning you got up and you wasn't feeling yourself. You know, it was just one of those days you had a rough week at work and you're like, it was just a rough week. The question is really asking over the last two weeks, so the question says, and normally when I'm reading to my patients, I would read it like this. Over the last two weeks, how often have you um, been bothered by any of the following? So little interest or pleasure in doing things. So as I said before, if you put zero, let's get a pen. So if you say not at all, then you will circle zero if you don't have it at all. Maybe you have a little interest in doing things or pleasure in doing things, maybe several days for the week. And it's going to be one. 
Maybe it happens nearly every day. So in that case, you're going to put a three. And then I'm going to read the second question again, because I just want to make sure that the patient understands what I'm saying. So I said, over the last two weeks, and I'll read the second question. Have you been bothered feeling down, depressed, or hopeless? Now, once you're going to answer the similar it is number one, where if it's not at all, you're going to put zero. If it is more than half a day, you're going to put two. And you're just going to circle these answers because at the end, we're going to tally all the scores. And I move on to question number three. Now, trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, or sleeping too much. And I'm not talking these are regular circumstances. You know, we have a week where you have a lot for work, school, family, and you're just extremely tired. If for our females, we're going through our menstrual cycle, so our body's just off. You know, maybe it was a week where you did just more than you used to. Um, the holiday times, when everybody's coming and you try to prepare for the family, that can be an exhausting time as well. But it's where you've noticed that you're having trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, or sleeping too much. The fourth question says, feeling tired or having little energy to do things. And I'm not just talking, I said, we just feel tired. You're talking about you knowingly realize and you feel that something is off. I'm not motivated. I don't want to get up. I just don't have the energy to do the things I used to like to do or the things I need to do. Whether it be to get up and go to work or just to you know, take care of yourself or your family. But it's becoming the part where it is obvious, maybe to yourself, but also to those around you. Number five says, and I once again, I'm going to say, I'm going to keep on reading over the last two weeks. How often have you been bothered by any of the following problems? Number five says poor appetite or overeating. Now, when some people are overwhelmed, whether it be stressed, depressed, or whatever situation is, some people may not eat as much. So you have a poor appetite. Now, or you may overeat. So those, it could go either way. So either you're going to eat less or you're going to eat more. And once again, and the responses will be based on not at all for a zero or several days, and we're talking about a week, you know, over a week period or two weeks period, also more than half the days or nearly every day. All right, number six, let's say, over the last two weeks, how often have you been bothered by any of the following? By bothered by feeling bad about yourself or that you're a failure or have let yourself or your family down? And this can mean different things to different people based on your culture. But, you know, it's a case where you feel as though you're feeling bad. You feel, you you know, not a case you're trying to motivate yourself like I could have done better. But you feel as though, okay, I didn't achieve the things I want to. I feel bad. You feel like you're a failure. You feel like you let yourself down. If you have a family, you feel like you let your family down. And this could also be based on the fact that you're hearing these things around you as well. Okay, so number seven. In the last two weeks, have you had trouble concentrating on things such as reading, the newspaper or watching TV. Now I know we don't really read much newspaper or I don't want to say we, but maybe it's not a popular thing to read like a physical newspaper, but you may read like, you know, a digital version or watching TV, but you can apply these to the regular things. So watching TV, um, just focusing on one task. So if you're having trouble concentrating on task as well. Um, so not necessarily like Reading, reading newspaper or watching TV, not only those two tasks, but just things that you would normally be to focus on or things that you should be able to do with undivided attention. Now, the eighth point is moving or speaking so slowly that others could have noticed or the possible of the opposite. So being so fidgety or restless that you have been moving around a lot more than usual. So what I'm saying by this is it's a case where you're just oh, slouching around and you're just not having energy. But it could also be a case where you're just very hyper, you're so active and you're just going, 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 going. And you notice that something is off. And maybe you may not notice that as well because you're in that trance. It could be that someone has noticed and said it to you that, hey, you know, are you okay? You know, you seem a little bit down, they may say, or, you know, you seem a little bit hyper or active. And that would be something that you, you would take off. And then the ninth question, because there are nine questions on the PHQ-9 questionnaire, is thoughts of thoughts that you would be better off dead or of hurting yourself in some way. Now, it could just be straight up 
or you suicidal or your thoughts of being better off dead. But hurting yourself in some way could just be a thought that you're thinking, maybe I'm better off not being here. Um, so it's one of those times where you try to advise you have a suicidal thought, which you think about hurting yourself or homicidal thought, you think about hurting other people. But, um, if that thought happens, if you felt low over the last two weeks, it'll be not at all. If it hasn't happened, um, more than half the day or nearly every day. Now, once these questions are answered right down here, you're going to see the scores are going to be tallied. Let me get a laser now. The scores will be tallied and they'll be entered here. So for each category, so let's say we have five ones, we put five, you know, zeros. They're all zero. That's going to be zero. Two twos, that's four. Three threes, then we put nine. Um, the total score would then be added. Now, let's move on to the next slide. And this is the thing that I'm going to put in the comment box that takes you to the PhD Quam 9 questionnaire. So a score greater than 9 is considered as moderate depression and should be thoroughly evaluated. I want to emphasize that point where I said thoroughly evaluated. So let's go back. You see, okay, I'm trying to go back to show you where we get a 9. But 9 or greater is that provider is going to say to you now, Okay, explain to me what you mean by this answer. Explain to me what you mean by this answer because sometimes it could be misunderstanding not understand the question was saying. But like trouble of sleeping, for example, we will try to expand on that. Is trouble falling asleep, staying asleep? If it's staying asleep, what's bothering you? Something you're thinking about, you know, what's causing you to wake up. Um, so just export the thought further. But as I said, a score greater than nine will be considered as moderate depression and would require thorough in evaluation. So it's not a diagnostic, it's a screening tool that will aid in the diagnosis, but it's a tool that is used to determine um, what other interventions are necessary. And these are some references that I used um, from the CDC, also for the PHQ-9 questionnaire and National Institute of Health. So we are going to continue discussion on depression, um, maybe not depression, but more mental health for Mental Health Awareness Month. I just wanted to introduce into this screening tool that is used, or you may have been introduced to it before when you went to your provider. But I want you to understand where we're coming from with this tool and to also understand the value of this tool and not to fear answering the questions, honestly, because it's just to be used to determine what next. And that's what we're aiming to approach. So thank you for watching. Um, be well, take care of yourself and have a good day or good week. Bye bye.